Hi, this is Ray Lindstrom with my series of home movies. And we're beginning here in 1976. And I've got the two kids, my boy Barry and my girl Karen. We're downtown Phoenix and we just left Wilson Camera because we had to stop there and get a lot of film and camera equipment for our big trip, which we've got planned for the Grand Canyon coming up shortly. So we always like to go in the fall. So this is the fall of 1976. And my son was born in 1966. So he is 10 years old, a little over 10. And uh, my daughter, who was born in 1978, she's eight years old. Not quite, not quite. Well, we're downtown, we're checking out newspapers and all that kind of stuff that you do when you're downtown. There's a sign for the Arizona Bank, which hasn't been around for a long time. There's another fine building downtown. I believe that's the municipal building. I think that's the uh, police department, as a matter of fact. There's my daughter with her Phoenix Suns t-shirt on. Yes, maximum height 12 feet. Don't worry, honey, I think you're going to be less than 12 feet. Hello there. Now we're going to take a trip out east. We're going to go up on North 16th Street in just a little while. And we're going to visit where Dad's office is. There's the First National Bank Plaza. First National Bank, that doesn't exist anymore. Wells Fargo, I think, is the, uh, is the successor to the famous First National Bank of Arizona. There we are at the corner of Walk and Don't Walk. Ah, yes, and there's one of Phoenix's finest. That's the way the old cars used to look, the old police cars in Phoenix in 1976. Now, at this point, uh, Mac Jet and I had formed our company, Lindstrom and Jet Advertising, and we were up on North 16th Street. And we're going to take a trip up there. Oh, there's my car right there. That is a 1976 Cadillac. Eldorado. Ooh, what a fine vehicle that was. That was my first luxury car. You know, one of my uh, big clients was Earnhardt Ford in those days. And uh, we had a lot of clients, and we were just starting doing oil painting sales all over the country, and we would eventually do them all over the world. But anyway, okay, here we are. We're up on North 16th Street right now, and we're going to stop, and we're going to visit the office. The office of Lindstrom and Jet. So the kids are messing around there. This is a nice little park office plaza. A very nice little uh, place. And uh, had nice, uh, nice businesses in there. And Barry is pointing to, yes, the one, the only, Lindstrom and Jet Incorporated Advertising. A fine place. And we were absolute, we were burglarized there one time, and they took everything in our entire place. And after that, we put a burglar alarm on there, which was always good. After you have a burglary, what you want to do, the first thing you want to do is put a burglar alarm on there. Now we're at the Grand Canyon. Barry and I are going to the Grand Canyon. We're going to hike down below. We're at the Kayabab Trail. And our plan this time is to hike down the Kayabab Trail. We both got our backpacks on. And we're going to go down there, and we're going to spend the night at the bottom. And then the next night, we're going to climb up to the top. And then I've arranged for an airplane to pick us up and fly us across the canyon so we don't have to go all the way across and then come all the way back. So here we are. We're taking the Kayabab Trail down, which is a, it's really a great trail. And it's a lot of fun. And we were in pretty good shape in those days because we would get up three times a week and climb Squaw Peak in Phoenix. And that got us into shape. Now the first stop is Cedar Ridge. This is about a mile and a half down. We're going to stop and maybe have a little snack, take some photos, and relax a little bit after all. We're not in any great hurry, but uh, this is just a, a great trip. Grand Canyon is a wonderful place. And it's a lot of fun to go hiking in the canyon. From one side to the other, up and down, we've done it. We've done it many times. As a matter of fact, this I forget whether this was our first or second year. Might have been our second year because I don't think the I don't think the, you can see the trail down there. That zigzag trail. We're going to end up down there. I told Barry, I said, "Here, take the camera, and I want to get some pictures of me." Look at that nice backpack. And I was in pretty good shape in those days. I must say, I couldn't do it now, but then I could. And these were the probably the greatest times of my life. Look at there. Wow, way down there. 
down there is the Tondo Trail, and you can see the Colorado River down there. That's our goal is to get down there. Now, this is just the opposite of climbing a mountain. In a mountain, you climb up first, and then you go down. But in the Grand Canyon, you go down first, and then you go up. So at the beginning, it seems like it's kind of easy, except for the fact that you do get a lot of blisters on your feet because your, your toes are usually pointed into your shoes, and that's where you get the blisters. Oh, we're getting closer to the river now. I can see that, the beautiful Colorado River. And the, right down there is Ghost Ranch where they have some cabins, but we're not staying in cabins. No, we've got our tent with us, and we're going to stay overnight. Oh, Barry, quit fooling around. What do you look at? He's pretending like he's going to jump off. He's going to say, hey, I'm going to fool Mom now. Here, let's, let's scare her a couple of times. Well, we're going down, and then we're going down to the bridge, which is across the, uh, just a, it's just a little bridge that you walk across. Now, we're down at Kayabad Bridge right there. And we go across under, there, there's a tunnel. And then on the other side of the tunnel is the bridge that you walk across. And I believe that they also take some, um, some burrows across there too. We get to Phantom Ranch, that's 7.3 miles, which is what we've walked. And uh, there's some greenery down there. It's a lot cooler down there up on top. The weather probably at this time of the year, this is September. So the weather up there is probably around 70 or 80 degrees. But down here, it's a lot cooler, and uh, it's around 50 or 60 degrees, so it's real nice weather. And this is the Little Colorado River, which goes right into the main Colorado River. And a great place to do stuff. Yep, and Barry's really enjoying himself getting out there in that water. We sure had a good time on these trips, and we did it probably for about eight years until he got older. We just never did it again after that, but the first few years, it was fabulous. So we are down here now. This is uh, at the bottom of the canyon, the Little Colorado River, and we're right near Phantom Ranch. A lot of people take mules down here. Ah, the mules. That's, that's the lazy man's way of doing this whole thing, isn't it? Yeah, you bet. If you want the real adventure, you walk down, you backpack, and there's our tent right there. We had this little blue tent that served us well. And once we got down there, then we could explore the whole bottom and see what was going on. And the, uh, this, is, this is where the uh, water's a little rough down there. You know, a lot of people, they take, uh, they take those trips in those big rafts. Well, we've never done that before, but uh, we've gone down and done a lot of hiking around there. This is, this is the bridge. This is the footbridge that goes across. Ah, uh, nothing like skimming stones and throwing rocks into a body of water. That's what we like to do. The Grand Canyon is, uh, is a place where all geologists like to go because I believe that you see about 500 million years worth of layers there of different, of different rocks, of granite and sandstone and igneous rocks. It's an absolutely incredible place. You can see some of the canyons, or some of the cabins, I should say, there for Ghost Ranch Lodge where people stop and they, uh, they can stay if they want. Very, very limited uh, accommodations. Oh, but there's that blue tent. And now we're going to have a little supper time here. We've got a uh, picnic table along with our tent. And we're going to be cooking up some fine vittles tonight. And we see a few little, a few critters hanging around here. I'm sure they enjoy the, uh, the folks who bring some food. There were a lot of... Uh, there were a lot of gophers and ground squirrels. We had to tie up uh, a lot of our food and everything and hang them from strings uh, and rope to the various trees there so that all those critters didn't eat our food. Well, now the next day we're climbing up to the, uh, the top on the other side of the Grand Canyon. We, went, we started on the south side. Now we're on the north side. Now we're climbing up on the other side and... Uh, uh, the topography is, a, is, is somewhat the same, but when you get up to the top, uh, it's a little bit different. It's a little cooler on the uh, north side. Ah, yes, what an adventure seeker there. Ribbon Falls, way on the other side. We've uh, gone 12 miles now. This is beautiful, beautiful territory. The scenery is spectacular. The falls 
Everything you'd want to see is, is in the Grand Canyon. I highly recommend it. If you guys haven't been to the Grand Canyon, believe me, it's a place you just don't want to miss. It's one of the great, one of the great sights of the world. And there's Barry as uh, we're continuing our climb up on the north side. Ribbon Falls, wow. What a spectacular adventure. Great for kids, too, boy. They just love to climb all over the place, don't they? Mm-hmm. That's a dandy, all right. Boy, it's tough going, going up there, I tell you. You've really, you really got to be in shape to do this. This was rough. This was rough. And it was rain, too, you know. You got rain, and oh, boy, we are worn out, aren't we? Woo! Man. This was tough. Yeah, it's rainy, a little rainy out there. Look at that. Uh-huh. I remember when we got toward the top over there. And then we got to the north rim, which was 20 miles. Finally made it all the way to the other side. And hopefully, there's a uh, airplane waiting for us on the other side there. Oh, but first of all, we had to go to the, uh, had to go to the, uh, the little uh, resort area over there on the north side, the Grand Canyon Lodge. Boy, I wanted to go in there and take a little snooze. We were really whacked out, I'm here to tell you. Well, we got in the plane. There it is. We're in the plane now, and we're taking the, the small plane. I think it's a Cessna, and the pilot took us over to the other side and deposited us back on the south side. Back from whence we came. And another great view of the canyon. You can see Barry there in the corner of the plane. Another great view of the canyon. I tell you, there's just no place like it in the entire world. Wow. That's where we were, way down there. I can see the bridge and the, and the river. And uh, I can see uh, Ghost Ranch. It's all down there. We went from one side to the other, 20 miles. And now we're flying from one side to the other. A lot easier to fly from one side to the other than to walk, let me tell you. But boy, you feel like after you get back, you feel like you've really accomplished something. Fabulous. Now it looks like it's kind of getting toward dark. This is kind of toward the end of the day there. And uh, we're getting we're getting toward the uh, toward the little airport on the south side. And I think we're just coming in to land, just getting ready to land. The sun's going down, and that concludes our great adventure going from one rim to the other at one of the greatest sights in the world, the fabulous Grand Canyon. Incredible. And we go home. And what do we get when we go home? Well, just those regular great all-American pursuits like baseball. Yep. There's Barry getting ready to get up and bat here in the Little League team at Cocopa School. We're going to have some baseball. Oh, I love baseball. I always played baseball when I was a kid. I, you know, the kids don't play as much baseball these days like they used to when I was a kid. I see people out there playing soccer, and I see all these baseball fields, and there's nobody there. Well, I got to tell you, when I was a kid, and I lived in Mount Prospect in Palatine, Illinois. Every day we'd be getting up a game. That's what you'd call it. All the kids would go around to all the various houses, and it wasn't organized at all. We didn't have any helmets. We didn't have anything, but we had a bat, a baseball, and everybody had a mitt, and that was it. We chose up sides, and we played baseball. Baseball was great. You didn't, we didn't play, play much of anything else. We didn't play much of football or basketball or any other sport but boy we just love to play baseball i learned i learned that when i first came out to uh, tucson in 1950 when i was when i was nine years old and that's all the kids did all year round was play ball i loved it too i love baseball i still love baseball today you know it's still it's still my favorite sport after all this time well we're living in north scottsdale we live at 6420 east gary road which isn't too far from this particular place which is Cocopa School and this is where they had they played a lot of baseball this is uh, this is the school that Barry and Karen went to my two kids from uh, from the time they were little all the way through eighth grade and eighth grade graduation yep nice school nice area of town way up in uh, way up in North Scottsdale playing ball 
Yep. We're going to hit a home run today, aren't we? Well, maybe not, but we're having fun anyway, and that's all that counts. You get out, you play ball, and you want to have fun. Well, there's, uh, there's Kara. That's, uh, that's my brother-in-law's daughter. That's Kara Schuyler. That's my kid's cousin, the first of this two Schuyler girls. And it uh, looks like she's around, around two years old there, and I would say that this is probably around 19, oh, well, what, what would we say, 1977, I think, something like that. Oh, and there's Alan, and there's Liz. Alan and Liz Schuyler right there with their little girl. New, uh, new family, and uh, they're at our house in uh, Scottsdale visiting. It's going to be a great Christmas, and we've got all the relatives there, as a matter of fact. We've not only got Kara and her cousin Karen, who's picking her up right there, and there's Liz and Al. Nice mustache and sideburns you got there, Al. And uh, I see somebody over on the right-hand side. Could that possibly be Diane wearing the blue pants? Well, I wouldn't be a bit surprised. And we're going to have some fun. Okay, now we've got the whole family out here. This is Gus Schuyler, my father-in-law. And, of course, there's Barry. We're all playing basketball over there on the side. And there's Karen and my dad in the fancy uh, flowered shirt. And there's Diane wearing the sunglasses and uh, in her pantsuit. And over there is, over there where on the extreme left is, uh, that's, my mother is on the extreme left, and Diane's mother is right next to her, on the right. And that's the way it was, that's what it was, and I, I believe that this is Christmas 1977. We're all having a good time, aren't we? You betcha. Yep, that's mom on the left, my mom on the left, and then... Wearing that little scarf there in the, in the tan outfit, that's uh, Helen Schuyler. That's Diane's mother. There's my dad and Gus. We're all having fun playing basketball. See, you want to, when you're taking home movies, and like I've said a million times, why take five seconds of people doing something when you can take minute after minute after minute? Yes, this is another Academy Award winning Fabulous feature. Great home movies. I think this should win an award. Great home movies of America, right here. There's Mom. Come on, Mom. Can you throw that ball at all? Well, you can get up there. You can kind of get it close, I guess. And there, I think that's, uh, I think that's Gus's rental car. That's my, I think that's my, my parents' gold uh, Chevrolet. What year is that? I don't know. I wish I could tell you. It's... A car from the 70s, I think, 68, 69, 70, something like that. Or maybe it's, maybe it's like 75. No, I should know that, shouldn't I? You know, we all knew the, uh, the different makes and models of cars back in those days. Now all cars look alike. But in those days, they were different. Oh, Diane's going to take the camera, and the king of rock and roll is going to shoot a ball right there. Yes, that's me. There I am. I'm pretending like I'm with the Phoenix Suns. Oh, boy, would I love to play with the Suns. Nope, I'm not so good, though, unfortunately. Yep. You know, we just weren't a lot of great athletes in my family. That's all I can tell you. Just did not have a lot of great athletes. One of those things, you know. Just one of those things. Well, that's, uh, that was Christmas of uh, 1977. We don't show inside with the tree or people playing Santa Claus or gifts or anything like that. All we got are people out playing basketball. <laughs> that, was the, that was the best we could do to keep, to keep it with a lot of action and excitement. So there you have it. A lot of fun playing basketball. There's the garbage can. There's the wall. We're going to run after the ball. We're going to keep on shooting till somebody makes a hoop. There's Gus, my father-in-law, and what? Oh, my gosh, he made a basket. So, therefore, we've reached the epitome of... Now we're going to Squaw Peak Park Trail. This is later on, and this is uh, my daughter's Girl Scout brownie outfit. All going for a hike up Squaw Peak. The entire... 
the entire brownie troop. Is that what you call it? A brownie troop? And Barry's going with two. It's kind of kind of help out. And uh, since we've we've done this a million times, we've gone up Squaw Peak. Barry and I would go up there three times a week to get in shape for our trips up to the Grand Canyon. So this is a little bit different for the girls. This is, these are all Karen's friends. See them all here. And uh, there's my daughter Karen. And they're all going up. And I think I'm I'm trying to think if this is 1977. I think I think Karen's about eight or nine years old here, if I'm not mistaken. And probably the girls are all about the same age. And some of them have uniforms on and some of them don't. My daughter doesn't. Anyway, they're ready to uh, climb up Squaw Peak, which is... Now, that's changed. I believe that they've changed the name of Squaw Peak now. Squaw is not, is not a good name. It's a derogatory name. The uh, Native Americans said that Squaw was a derogatory name. So the peak has been named after... One of the uh, one of one of our soldiers who died during the Iraq War, one one of the first women soldiers, a Native American, and her name was Piestawa, and so the name of the peak now is Piestawa Peak. It's no longer Squaw Peak, but in those days we called it Squaw Peak. That was its name, but now it's called Piestawa Peak. So all the girls are taking a little ride up to the top of. Piestawa Peak. Well, I'll call it Squaw Peak. That's what we called it back then. And uh, we're going to go all the way to the top. The um, elevation of Phoenix is about 1,200 feet. The top of Squaw Peak is 2,400 feet. So actually, you climb up 1,200 feet to 2,400. Now, if you lived in Tucson, the the elevation of Tucson is approximately 2,400 feet, which is the top of Squaw Peak. So when you go up to the top of Squaw Peak, it's like being in Tucson, as far as, as, far as the elevation goes. We're all going to get up there. I see people with some canes. I tell you, everybody wants to go up Squaw Peak. There's Barry showing them where it is, because we're going to get up to the very top there. Yes, we are, I tell you. Nothing like, uh, nothing like the accomplishment of going to the pinnacle of the mountain. And that's where we are. We are right at the very top. So that was a great accomplishment here for, uh, for the brownies. And they can see all over Phoenix. Isn't that great? This is uh, Karen and Barry Lindstrom from 1977. Ray Lindstrom taking these home movies. And we thank you all for watching as we close this one out and see the end of this particular reel of family home movies. Thanks for watching.